Anthony. Blog Talk I got it. Radio. The tumor's back. He's got to go. <laughs> Honey, get my gun. Welcome to Take Two Radio. We are pleased to bring you interviews with people in the entertainment and music industry, discussions and recaps of the four remaining daytime soaps, that's The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, General Hospital, and Days of Our Lives, as well as various other shows. For upcoming and previous shows, check Take2Radio.com, that's with the number two, and you can find us on Blog Talk Radio, iHeart Radio, iTunes, and other streaming apps. Follow us on social media at Take Two Radio, and thanks for listening. Well, good evening, and welcome to Take Two Radio Soaps. I am your lead co-host for the evening, Anthony Corona. Pam is doing wonderful Pam things. I am, of course, here with David. Say hi, David. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? We've got Carolyn. Hi, everyone. Hope everyone's doing good. Willie. Yeah. Hola, amigos. It's great to be back. <laughs> and we couldn't do a show without our candy girl. How you doing? Hey, hey, hey everybody. Hope you guys are well. <laughs> We've got a great show planned for you this evening. Our special guest should be here momentarily. In the meantime, I think we're going to banter a little bit about Actually, I Sean. think she is here. All right. right. Well, you yeah. may remember her from One Life to Live. She won an award for her outstanding performance as a younger actress. Please Help us welcome to the show, Robin Wiley. Hello. Yay. Robin. Hey. Hola, Hi, Robin. everyone. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Welcome back. Hi, Robin. <laughs> How is you know, everyone? Good. We're doing How good. Are How are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> How are you feeling? You know, it's day by day. It's just um, one of those things where, you know, you never know when it's going to hit you. And for those that are listening that don't know, I have um, stage four endocervical adeno, which is a cervical cancer. And um, I'm just, I'm plugging away. <laughs> Roll with the punches. Well. We definitely want to thank you. You're so brave to speak about your experiences, to bring up your experiences here to Take Two Radio. You know, a lot of people have talked about the COVID time warp and how some things feel like it happened just yesterday and some things feel like it's years and years away. How has going through treatment and, and feeling up and down and, and dealing with COVID, do you, do you feel that it would be a different situation if there were no pandemic? You know, honestly, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you're going through this plus during a pandemic. And that is true. You know, it, it's just extra stuff I have to be cautious of. But ultimately, I would be doing the same stuff. I'm doing the same things that all of you are doing. I'm wearing a mask. I, the only difference is I don't go out, really. I, I'm basically on a complete lockdown when everything's open. And every now and then I'll, you know, like my husband will, you know, say, do I want to go for a car ride and, you know, something like that. But I can't really, you know, it's not like I'm going to go walking around Walmart or something. But right. it's the same. You know, it's the same. My my situation's a little different, though, because I have naturally, you know, the response to medicine and everything on top of everything else and just, you know, ultimately we're all going through this crazy thing. I just have a little bit of added stuff to it. <laughs> right. That's a yeah, great outlook, it, and, and I'm it, sure it's very well, cathartic. I mean, 
Yeah, you can't. I'm sorry, I, I mean, I'm sorry. Um, you you can't just. I guess originally, during, when the pandemic started and stuff in March, I was. I thought, wow, this is kind of cool. You know, you get to stay home with my husband and my little dog and watch movies. You know, watch my horror movies and binge TV and all that. But then you get to a point where you're like, oh, this is awful. You know, you're stuck inside. You want to just go out anywhere. And um, then when I was diagnosed in August, you know, by that time I was, I had it. I was just ready for this whole pandemic thing to be done. And um, it, you know, I ended up in the hospital for a, a week while they were diagnosing me and I had my first thing of chemo and now it's kind of like it's a blessing that I get to stay in, you know, because I get so tired and, and it it wears me out. But ultimately, you know, I just got to keep going and stay positive. And, and I, I hate admitting that I have to do what the doctors tell me, but I have to. <laughs> so, you know, listening is not one of my better things <laughs> <laughs> which is probably what makes you great in the horror genre you know it's it's oh, that yeah. natural response mm-hmm. that reaction that you can't you know you can't fully script it, you know it takes a marriage between the writing and and the style of the actor or actress playing and playing the part so i can definitely oh, yeah. see how that would yeah <laughs> yeah i'm one of those spontaneous people i think it was years and years of the soap <laughs> where everything is so scripted and you have to listen for that cue line so that you can, you know, keep the story going. Um, Horror movies is kind of, it it was fun because a lot of times they would just kind of, you know, give me the script and stuff, but they let me kind of move around with it. And um, in fact, there's a movie Hell Week that I was in where the one character's name is Griggs because... It, and I, I basically <laughs> wore pajamas and smeared makeup all over my face and walked around with a doll and a drill. You know? <laughs> so. <laughs> so our co-hosts, as you heard in the opening, we've all got some questions for you. I'm going to sure. start with one question. Um, you started, you know, soaps at a very early age, and we hear, you know, often on this show what a training ground they are. You know, they're the fastest paced, the most, the most production level that you're ever in any film. You know, you sit around for hours and hours for one scene, et cetera, et cetera. You know, nighttime television, you know, you have a, a way different pace. So starting out that young in soaps, what did that do for you in your, in your art, in your acting? Well, I think, I mean, ultimately, I started acting when I was three, Um, and my training was on stage, and also at a very early age, I did a lot of commercials. I also did voiceovers, because I sing and everything, Um, so I think the whole, the best training you can get is any training, to be honest, when you are young, Um, because it disciplines you. The soap... I kind of fell into because I mainly was, you know, I played Annie for so many years and did so much musical theater and TV. I was doing Nickelodeon and, you know, the goofy kids stuff, but the soaps was a different thing because, you know, you, you're right up close. You're not, there's not an audience watching you for, you know, that's far away from you there's someone right up in your face, you know, (laughs) the fans are literally watching you straight forward. So it's, you can't screw up was my thing. You know, I, I can't, I, I, they used to call me the one take wonder because I was so used to theater where you can't just go back and start the scene over. You got to keep going. So that I think theater was the best training that I could have to put me in the position of soaps. And then once I got into the soaps, you know, I was older, so I understood more, um, but it was the discipline of the memorization because each day is a different show. It's not a repeat. Um, And working with an assortment of people because, you know, you have your – 
the the person that you're is your love interest, you know, that you know you're going to be in a lot of scenes with. But yeah. they're you're you're never you know, it's it's fun it was fun for me because I never knew, you know, if they write in a wedding, I could have lines with a person that I never have spoken to for like 2 years on the mm-hmm. show, you know. So it's it's a really wonderful um a wonderful job it was. To me it was like a passion because number one, you're getting a weekly paycheck. Number two, Please. you're not having to do, you know, repeats of anything. And but it it was uh you have to be pretty disciplined. You have to be ready for being there for hours and hours and hours. My first day on Another World, I was there at five in the morning and I did not get on camera until two thirty AM. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, and I, yeah, it was so that you, yeah. you have to be prepared. I know Candace is probably going to hit you up with the another world questions, but I have two more for you. One. When you're in oh, here, sure. you know, you get, you get that live feedback. It's instantaneous. You know, um, you know, you know what the audience is reacting to, et cetera, et cetera. And of course there's, you know, the stage door, et cetera. And then, of course, on Nickelodeon, you have your own show. But when you get to soaps, it's a different kind of fan base. And, and depending on the storyline and who you're playing with will depend on what kind of reactions you get. What were some of the surprising reactions you got from fans during your soap years? Um, I think uh, One Life to Live was the first soap I was on. And what people don't know is, I didn't even wear makeup at first. They would just put, they would they would pinch my cheeks before I went on, like to do my scene, because <laughs> I was playing like a thirteen, fourteen year old or whatever, or, or teenager, and I was you know, eighteen. So, um, that was kind of weird. And I think the reaction of people when they would see me at like charity events and stuff they were kind of like, what? Because I would have makeup on, you know, I would, I would have, Mm -hmm. I would have, you know, it was like, oh my goodness, you know, so Stephanie on One Life to Live was more of, I think, in my opinion, she started out kind of like a tomboy, rebellious, you know, and rebellious teenager, Carlo Hester's niece. And I think, what was unusual was the people that would come to the studio to ABC and they would stand outside. And I was so floored because, I mean, it's not like someone at a theater waiting at the stage door. These people, a lot of them really thought you were the character. So when you walked out that door, they, Mm -hmm. and, and what they, what was weird for me and I started to pick up on it pretty quick was, the shows were being shot, but the ones that were airing were, were from like three weeks ago. So yeah. they're questioning me on things that have gone bypassed like a while ago to me. So like I would get, well, how could you just leave Kevin? Why didn't you let him kiss you? And I'm thinking, what are they talking about? <laughs> like, what is this? I'm thinking, wait a minute, he's kissed me like 50 times since then. What are you talking about, you know? <laughs> so that was some of the weird stuff. Another world, you know, um, another world, basically Maggie was me. I mean, I I talked mm-hmm. like Maggie. I sang. I, you know, I'm goofy. And they, she was written pretty much as Robin. And um, for me, I would go outside and talk to the fans, and I'd try to get them in and take them on a tour. And, you know, to me, the, the people that came to see me was a blessing and will always be a blessing. And so I always tried to give back. You know, if I could get them in to, for a tour or anything, I would. But the the reactions of of how they were seeing the character as to what I was shooting that day (laughs) weeks later was kind of hard to figure out. You were really thrown in the mix, you know, at One Life. Um, You know, as you mentioned, Carlo has his niece. And, um, you know, there there was a lot of interesting storyline that was going on around you. And then suddenly you were in a bunch of interesting storylines. So what what stands out the most to you? What do you remember the most about jumping into that 
character into that world? Um, well, when I started the role of Stephanie, Stephanie was only supposed to be like a recurring character when I started. She wasn't supposed to be a regular. And after I started, they switched. They all of a sudden, you know, I don't know. I, I was crying on cue all the time. And <laughs> then I started you were good. singing, but they, they, I tried, you know, and I, I think I was fresh just because I I was innocent. I, I was kind of thrown into that world immediately. I remember the first day I started, I w- I, one of the things I went to was the premiere of Soap Dish, the movie. I had no idea. I went to the Emmys, you know, and I... I remember getting a dress from Value City, and my mom was a seamstress, and she changed the dress so no one would have it. You know what I mean? (laughs) It's just you get thrown into this world. And with Stephanie, I think what was weird was she started out so sweet and innocent and, you know, lowly falling in love, like first love stuff, Romeo and Juliet, the families are fighting. Um, But then all of a sudden it was like, Oh, Stephanie, and some of these scenes are start, she's starting to have a backbone. Like she's starting to fight back, you know, and and talk back. And I think um, as she progressed, I loved that it was my character that shot him because no one expected it. They did the whole who shot Jr. Yeah. thing, and to be honest, yeah. I think it was a situation where I wasn't even supposed to be around still at One Life to Live. I was, my, my contract was already supposed to be finished, and then they renewed it after, I mean, they, they were grasping, I think. And, um, and on top of that, then I did Metro on Broadway, so I was going between Metro and One Life to Live at the same time, trying to sew up the loose ends of the character. Well, so it, I got thrown our... into every, I got yeah, I got thrown everywhere. I have no idea. And and you took the material and you lived with it. You know, you you are definitely one of the memorable, uh, you know, sores up and and brought you know from from tomboy to you know vixen almost. And uh, yeah, long age. Well, thank so you. So Candace, I is our I, I just know I killed. I just know that the big thing for me was I got to kill Hawkman from Buck Rogers, but he came back. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Good. (laughs) Candace is our resident teacher, and she has been being put through the ringer lately, so we're going to let her go next in case she has to (laughs) step out early on us. Candace, you are up. it's the key. It's the key. Look, I love being a teacher. I do. I really do love a teacher. But yeah, this week, woo! Listen, I, I I teach I teach two two year olds and three year olds. Oh so, my! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 So, so you have patience. You know, <laughs> I. You know what? I I have patience, but you know, I always say this. Just like soap fans, you know, it's like a it's it's, it's another day. It's another story. Yes. It's another day. It's another day. I love my baby. I believe I really that. <laughs> so real quick, Robin, I wanted to. This is like off the off the the show interface. I wanted to say thank you to to you because I had to remember that I've seen you before the soap, and it was on rated R. You know, K rate, rated K for kids, which was oh, yes, that was my yes. first like that was my first like movie review show that I ever saw and everything because I remember A was for amazing and because I remember yeah. I, I just dawned on me I was like wait a minute hold up I remember her like she was part of my yeah. so thank you for my upbringing you were part of my upbringing that's why. that is so like, funny and you know what I love doing that show I got to review some really good movies like I went I mean, to premieres look. of movies and stuff <laughs> Because I think you guys did like the little, like the little mermaid, and I remember. Now this tells you I'm going way back. We're going way back here, and I remember yeah. 
that you got like it, it like you said somebody said A was not just for Ariel but it was for amazing awesome and then and then C was for cute and cuddly and I just remember for some strange reason that just all like came out just now I'm like wait a minute wait wait, wait, wait Nickelodeon I had Nickelodeon when I was a kid yeah okay I mean I was like okay I remember her now. This thing, thank you for remembering that. You're a welcome. It's, they can tell you right now. I'm like a, a, a encyclopedia of television. Like I, I, I really <laughs> think my parents just put me in front of the TV and said, "Here you go, Panda. Like, let's go." So. <laughs> you are <laughs> welcome for that. triggering a memory, Candace. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I remember and the show very well too. <laughs> what a memory. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, because I remember Cisco, I think it was Roger Ebert was on there. I think he did, yes. like, he was, like, on, on there. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. yep, yeah. okay. He did, well, the, yeah, we'll the, the characters, the, we were the hosts, and we basically, right. like, Roger Ebert was, like, that's who we were supposed to be like, but as kids. Right. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was a cause... big deal, yeah. Yeah, because you guys use the alphabet, because I love that, and I, that's why I always say, I, I, I say it to this day, these, the kids nowadays, they don't have those kind of shows anymore, where it was fun, it was educational, but you also learn stuff, like, again, A, that's like, the, you know, the alphabet, like, you, you know, did the alphabets, and you, but you was also having words that start with the letters, so that way yeah. that could already be programmed into your mind, say, Okay. Welcome to the teacher's world. <laughs> we, we, we couldn't figure out, I'll never forget, we couldn't figure out our rating system. They're like, just come up with something. So I wanted to kind of get it with, I mean, they, are, they were doing the letter thing, but I wanted to get like F. If it was a bad movie, then I wanted it to be F because F you get on your report card. You wanted to tie yep. it in, but you couldn't come up with a word for it. So I was like, F means forget it. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> but it, it was, that was a fun show. Yeah. I did a lot of Nickelodeon okay. stuff. That that Nickelodeon yeah. really was was cool at the time because they were owned by Viacom and they yep. they were linked to M T V. T V. Yes. Oh man, good time. We're about to have some good times with this. Okay, Rob, we're gonna talk after the show about that because I'm like, I'm like, I remember rated guy with me. Oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> enough about that. <laughs> yeah. So I do have some questions, obviously, um, regarding you know everything. So my first question is, is that you've been so brave to share your story with not only us fans, but for those who are going through this, this as well and who is sort of kind of living via you, like they're living through you. So my question is, what was your first reaction or thought when you first learned about your diagnosis? You know what? They told me, well, first of all, they, when I went, I just went for a pap smear. And when she said, oh, you have a, a mass on your cervix. And then her eyes got big and she goes, and it's sizable. That had me a little shooken up, but I, I still didn't think, oh, you know, it's going to end up being nothing. It's going to be nothing. But when I was in the hospital and, you know, at that point I knew I had cancer, but I didn't know what stage. When they told me stage four, mm-hmm. I had a meltdown. I had an absolute meltdown. And my doctor, Dr. Rosado, came in, and I'll never forget it. He grabbed my my toes through the through my blanket and he goes listen he goes you're young you're strong he goes and you have a good will and he's like and we're we're gonna go through this don't worry we're you know we're gonna treat this we're gonna figure it out um but I was told I was terminal you know that there was not really a chance of surgery. There wasn't much, you know, known about what I was going through because on top of the mass on my cervix, I had uh, a CT scan that showed that my mass, I had masses on my stomach that were pushing my organs. Oh. Yeah. So I, and I literally bloated up. I had fluid in my stomach to where it looked like I was like nine months pregnant. It was really Mm -hmm. bad. And, um, 
You know, I had the first chemo, and at that point, I thought, well, you know, I'm just, what else can I do? You know, I got to just do what I can. Um, I drove my husband nuts, I'm sure, because I kept texting him <laughs> and calling him going, you know, there's a package coming from Amazon. I ordered some beanies because they said I won't have hair. You know, and he's like, what? Mm-hmm. You know, so, but he, he really kind of, I don't know what I would have done if my husband wasn't, you know, there. And that was hard because he he wasn't allowed in the hospital. He wasn't allowed in anywhere. He could just drop me off for the initial thing, and then I was there. And mm. because of the pandemic, that's one thing that was a problem. So, you know, that was hard telling my, my family. You know, we both come from large families and letting everybody know that was hard. And then I will be honest, it goes through your head like you think of all these like reality doctor shows where there are people going into the emergency room and they can't afford treatment and stuff. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to be able to afford all this stuff. I mean, come on. I mean, it's ridiculous what yeah. they charge, you know, but yeah. you know, that's, I mean, that's when I started the fundraisers or my family did. And, you know, I have to say it was overwhelming, the response. And I'm so thankful for everybody and the prayers. And prayers do work because I was terminal, but I ended up having a surgery. And um, I had a what they call a tumor marker, which is your CA125 blood level. The normal range is 0 to 30. And that means that you're at a standard range where something could be present, but it's not, like, over-the-top crazy. I was at 1,150. Mm. After my second chemo, I went down to 192. So I was dropping. Yeah. The treatments were working on me. But the whole the whole process, I don't know what I would have done without my husband, my my little dog Ralphie. Every day they would show up, and I had a window in my room, and they'd be waving and stuff. But it was just, I can't really say what you what you think or what you feel because it's almost like every emotion possible hits you at once, yes. you know. And you have your up moments, you have your down moments, and I still go through those. But I'm an actress, so they're even more dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm just, you know, like you said, prayers do work, and we've been praying for you, honey. And you know, thank you. You know, we're that means we're glad, a lot. You know, you know, good news and good news. And you actually said something. I was going to ask you about this, but you know, they always say that pets and babies are like the greatest medicine. Yeah. And, <laughs> And so I was going to ask, how's Ralphie doing? How's the dog doing? Ralphie is doing great. Actually, he was just laying by me, and then he just ran out. But Ralphie, um, <laughs> yeah, I as I say, because I don't have children. My husband and I right. didn't have kids. and um, But we have Ralphie, and I feel like it's triplets. I think it was a very <laughs> hard labor that I went through. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he is... He's a little star in his own right because I have, and I've worked with him. I'll, I'll say, smile, show me your teeth, and he will show his teeth and smile for a picture. So I've got him. Aww. Yes, I've got. He'd be perfect for commercials, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure. I'm sure that somebody who's listening to this interview, they might be like calling up and saying, "Hey, can we get Ralphie for?" Uh, for a doggy toothpaste or something. I, I don't know. Exactly. Right? Yes. That could like, be frightening, like, but yes. That would be, but you know, now see, now you just thought of, we thought of a new idea right there is that, okay, a, a special doggy horror movie where the dog oh, sees wow. the yes. smile. See? Yes. See, look, Robin, look, we're going to talk. We're definitely going to talk. We're going to go on production together. We're going to make this work. <laughs> <We're> Ralphie. <laughs> we can make it work. Yeah, Ralphie we is a We can make star. this work. <laughs> Ralphie could be the living embodiment of a stuffed animal that comes to life in a very, very evil way with a it creepy, be, but it could be a lifetime smile. movie. 
It could yeah. be a lifetime movie, could still be a or, lifetime animal, movie. Or, a, or Animal Planet. Animal yes. Planet. We, well, yeah. I, it, I'll tell you what. It's funny. I'm the one that kind of gets Ralphie wound up and running around and stuff, and my husband's the disciplinary. <laughs> like, <laughs> Ralphie, you behave. I never admit oh. that I'm the reason why he acts this way, but it's true. We're, we get, don't worry, we can edit that out, edit this out. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it won't get traced back to what I've been just saying. So, but it, yeah. you know, like I said, I, you know, we all continue to pray for you, um, yeah, well, for your health, you. and you've just been so brave, and you're, you know. Believe it or not, you're you're a role model for so many people right now because they're going through this and they're looking at you as the face, you know, of right. being brave yeah. and being strong during this time. Well, so I commend you on that. Well, thank you. Do you know there's so much that I didn't know, I wasn't aware of, and I and I'm sure other people aren't either. But like, I didn't know there was a vaccine for eight, the H. TV virus that you can get when you're from 11 on up till 45, you know, and really? that's huge. Yeah, that's wow. huge. You can get you can get a vaccine that will stop at least the possibility of some of these cancers, and um, that's huge. That and people really need to know that. You know, go get your checkups. Go get your pap smear. Oh, yeah. Go get your mammograms, yeah. you know. And I yeah, thought I, I was just immortal. You know, I thought, uh, you know, I, yeah, I don't need all... this. I don't need this in here. I'm in this situation, mm-hmm. you know. So it's, yeah. it's important. I, didn't know it was I think at the 11. more we know. Yeah, yeah at 11, it was, it was, it was, yeah. you can, yeah, kids can get vaccines, and they actually recommend that they do. So um, hmm. I can't, ex- I can't ex- how important that is because um, it, the they HPV wouldn't have to vaccine, go through right? everything I'm going through. Yeah, yeah it's the H. Yeah. It's called HPV, and um, HPV. Yeah, yeah, and it's. I mean, it's so important to for for people to not even play around. Like seriously, it. You know, if I had a little girl or so, or a child, I they would be definitely. You know. And right. I know people are weird with vaccines, but this is a proven vaccine that, you know, does, I mean, obviously you never know. You could have some weird yeah. cancer like I have, but doesn't mean that you, it can't prevent others, you know? So, and why not? Mm-hmm. Honestly, these days, why not? <laughs> Sorry, right. But right. What do you have to lose? You know, <laughs> It's better to be safe than sorry. I'm just saying, you know. Like, yes. I just didn't know. I didn't know they were starting at, at 11. Like, yeah, I well, they I, for say, some reason, yeah. They. Go ahead. Uh, I was looking at the cancer. I, I've I've been uh, looking at a lot of the cancer stuff and talking with the Women's Cancer Society and stuff. And um, mm-hmm. I was just reading today that 11 and then the cutoff date is 45 years of age. So, you have a, you have a wide span there, you know, and um, yeah, it's a blessing. It's a blessing that they have something like that because, that, you know, I told my niece. My niece came to visit Stephanie, and I said, Stephanie, if I find out that there is actually a cure for this crap, I'm gonna beat the crap out of someone. <laughs> I, was like, I was in the mood. <laughs> I was like, because you hear all these, like, conspiracy theories and all this, but then when I hear, you know, oh, that it could be avoided with some of it, some cancers can be avoided with certain precautions. And so, and naturally, obviously, I didn't, I didn't know that. So now I do. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's sometimes it's, I mean, they tell you not to, but sometimes you have to trust your instinct and, and kind of do an investigation right. on your own. Because, like you said, some people don't know certain things until it's, you know, quote unquote, late, late in the game, or, you know, yep. when they're like, oh, by the way, we read, you know, on medicalhistory.com. And it's like, you could have told me this beforehand. Yeah. Like, come on now. So, but yeah, so hard. I definitely. But, 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to. It's, How it's many hard people to, will know because of this show and because of you being so public out there? Yes. And that really needs to be commended I as hope well. so. I really do not want anyone to have to go through this. But you know what? I I feel it's important for me to get my, you know, story out there because of the fact that I'm a person that was not even supposed to get to the point where I'm at. And mm-hmm. I've pushed through and, you know, I was supposed to just keep with chemo and all this other stuff, but not ever be able to get to the point of where they could ha- do a surgery on me. And they were able to. So for anyone listening that's going through these things, you never know. There is always a chance. And that's the way I looked at it. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to be the one that is not going to you know, not not go completely under. You know, I'm 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 a fighter and I'm gonna keep fighting, but I'm gonna stay positive and I'm I'm learning as I go. You know, and that's and teaching as you the, go, and that's the reason. Yeah, I'm trying. And yeah. and the thing is, you can't believe, you can't just Google things and statistics which I learned, and you, yeah. you just can't because some of those statistics statistics are for someone that is 80 that may have diabetes or another thing and they're giving you these number statistics of people that are different age ranges I mean everyone's cancer is a different cancer because it's your cancer it's not everyone it's your individual body Mm -hmm. so it's how you handle it and that's the that's what I've taken from this is I'm just going to be positive I'm going to plow through it, and I will have my moments where I am crying. But, I mean, I am female, and I am a soap actress. <laughs> so, right. It's just, it's just the way it goes. I mean, that, that exactly it. It is exactly it. Well, thank you, Robin, for taking my questions. I'm not going to hold up anybody else because I, I know my co-host has amazing questions. And like I said, well, we're going to keep praying, I know you girl. wanted to. Girl, uh, I know you want to touch on Maggie Corey real quick before we turn it over to, to Carolyn. Go ahead. You can have a few more minutes. Go on, go on with your Maggie Corey. Okay. It's me there. All right. Okay, so my question about this. <clears throat> All right. So my question is, first and foremost, well, okay, this is my big question. This is my big, big, big question. You work with amazing talent on Another World. And yes. Maggie Corey, oh, my God, that girl, that girl. <laughs> that girl, to be honest, that those are the kind of characters I like. I don't know, like I think something's wrong with me sometimes. But I did like Maggie. So my question is, with with another word, what did it teach you about? Like, did you find that the experience part, like I don't even know how to word this, but like, what did you learn from your experience of from another world, and what? story, like, little funny story can you share with us? I just want to know the inside Oh, my too. goodness. <laughs> girl, it's I have, so let me tell films. you. First off, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, what I could tell you is Maggie, Maggie was, I mean, that's how I talk. As you, as you can tell, by the way, I'm I, talking, I, I'm good. I'm goofy and I'm just kind of me and I don't change, you know, and I think Maggie kind of um, helped me, I guess, first of all, the actors I worked with were phenomenal. I mean, Another World was filled with, like, almost like Shakespearean actors. They were unbelievable. And it really showed me, I learned I could hold my own, you know, and it gave me some confidence because here I'm working with, you know, Charles Keating, and yes. Victoria Wyndham. And I worked a lot with Victoria Wyndham and Charles and Linda Dano. And, you know, it, it was interesting because the more I worked with them, the more they wanted to work with me because I I did play this quirky thing. And they realized this is really how she is. I mean, she's <laughs> this is how Robin is. So um, I learned that. I also... You know, as 
as the show was going on, people don't realize the turmoil that the show was in. Um, Just when I was there, there Mm -hmm. were three different producers. Um, But there was constant, you know, they would tell you the show's going to be canceled at Christmas time. Well, that was right after Mm -hmm. I started, and it definitely was not. You know, then it Mm -hmm. was, no, 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 you're, it's renewed for another year. And then it was, no, 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 we're, we're switching the times. And when I was there, they switched us to where it was before Days of Our Lives. Then at one point, we were after Days of Our Lives. And, yeah. mm-hmm. and I mean, it, it, the show was in a lot of turmoil, but so was all soaps in general from the minute they started the court reality stuff. You could just see it going, yeah. you know. It, re, it, it was a dying breed, and I think everyone just did the best they could. Um, what I think was interesting about Another World was most soaps would try to, when someone would leave, they would try to recast them with people that looked just like that person, whether yeah, Another World didn't do that. Um, like Lorna. Lorna went oh, from... Yeah. You know mm-hmm. Alicia Coppola to to Robin, you know, and it was and she was a redhead. You know, my character, well, my character was a baby. Then it was me, and then it went to then Maggie. The rest of the time was a brunette, and I was like platinum blonde. So it was another world. Really, uh, I think had pride in picking out people that were right for those characters, not just someone that looked right. And I, I really, really loved being on that show. I did. I loved working with Diego. You know, it was, it was hard to work. Diego and I ended up almost like brother and sister because we were together all the time. (laughs) You know, we fought like brother and sister. I shouldn't say that. We never really fought, but um, the characters, like the characters would be in a fight you know, a love quarrel, and we'd find ourselves, you know, rehearsing our lines and stuff and cracking up and doing charity events together. I mean, it's just you end up as a family. And another world after I left, I remember um, Donna Stewart or Anna Stewart uh, calling me and Judy Evans, like several people, you know. And it was just nice. And I still... And friends with, like, Diego, Christine Tucci, you know, um, you -hmm. become a family. So I definitely miss the show, as as does, you know, the people that watched it. It was a good show. But And I also miss the makeup and the costumes. Like, the wardrobe was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, that's why the art, art... wardrobe kept winning Emmys for a reason. I mean, it yes, was unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. They were they were phenomenal. So, so I just loved working, you know, along I was lucky to work alongside people who had respect for each other and really, I mean, they all were so gifted, you know. And Diego at the time mm. worked extremely hard yeah. because of his he had like an accent that so was hard uh-huh. for him to, and I'll tell you that guy worked really hard to to do like make sure his speech was clear and everything, and you saw everyone kind of having their own thing within their character that they had to work on, you know. So it, it was it was really an experience. It was a wonderful show. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> David, you're up. I, okay, yeah. great, Robin. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I said, so being admit, admits daytime and prime time can usually be the best of both worlds. So what would you say are the best gifts you received from each of those? Um, you know, I'm lucky. I'm extremely lucky because I've done so many different forms of acting, like from childhood on up, whether it was singing, whether it was, you know, theater, TV, whatever. Um, As far as soap and also 
you know, evening sitcom and all that stuff. I, I think what you realize is soaps were really hard. People often thought, oh, well, that's just, she's on a soap, you know, so you're going to get that dramatic acting. Well, yeah, but do you realize we're memorizing different lines every single day? Like, you're, it's incredible. You have to kind of forget what you did yesterday and just the next day it's brand new with nighttime like a series a series isn't year round it's you're shooting seasonal. nine episodes yeah it's seasonal so you're shooting nine episodes and you have a whole week to practice that one episode that you're going to shoot whereas yep. a soap you don't have that time you have minutes <laughs> you know you have you borrowed go, you time go, i think you borrowed time. I mean, there were several times Diego or, or Charles Keating or uh, Victoria Wyndham, we were running our lines for the first time together, you know, during our blocking, walking and then set. we didn't see each other, mm-hmm. and then walking on set, we're like, blah, 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 you know? And that's another yeah. thing with the Another World people. They really, they didn't play around with the script at all. They They really stuck to the script. Um, so that, that was something to learn, but I think the evening series type of thing is, is a wonderful thing because you, you work and then you kind of have several months off, you know, and then you can do charity events and stuff. Whereas on the soaps, we were shooting every day during the week. We had the weekends off, but the weekends off, I still was working because I, I would fly out to a PR event. You know, so I constant. Yeah. I did a lot with charity events and stuff. So it's just, you know, it's it's a blessing to be able to do anything in the industry. And I always say, for these young people that want to learn, or for anybody that wants to, you know, be involved in something, make sure that you enjoy being in front of a camera or be, enjoy being in front of the audience because there are so many possibilities. You may like doing camera work better. You may like being behind the scenes. You may like doing wardrobe or makeup. You know, it's just finding your niche of what of what you can do and what your creative passion is. Oh, that's that's um that's very insightful. Yeah, it's just, you know, you got not it's not for everybody, you know? You either love it or you hate it, but it shows, I think, if a person isn't happy, you know, and they're forced to play a character because they don't care, you know? (laughs) You've got to care. Yeah. Yeah. You do. David, what else do you have for us? Well, my second question is, first I want to start out with you also have my prayers throughout your fight. And I want to say, through your fight with your illness, who or what, besides Ralphie, brought (laughs) brought out your courage and strength? I know Um, Ralphie can do a lot. Yeah, Ralphie can do a ton. Let me tell you, he's the best worst (laughs) nurse ever. (laughs) um, I think my my husband... uh, brought out, you know, a lot of strength in me because, I mean, obviously people don't know this, but he lost his mother when he was 14 to cancer. So I can't imagine what he's been going through at this time, you know, with his wife going through this. And um, he's been strong and really taking care of me because there are times, I'll be honest, that I'll be like talking to you like this and then you know, an hour later, I have to lay down because I'm out of breath. You know, it's, it's, mm-hmm. you know, it comes and goes. And that, and I, you know, the support of all our family, our friends, um, fans have been just unbelievable. And I've always considered my, the fans, my friends too. So I always say family and friends, but, um, it really, it's just been unbelievable 
the support and seeing people really, you know, just kind of put put things differences aside and come together and and just you know really rally be you know around me and everything and it, it gives me a, a boost and um, it helps me you know each day I wake up and I know each day every morning it's it's a struggle I'm not gonna lie I have a hard time I'm very sore in the morning and especially now with an incision from surgery on top of my last chemo but you know each day I, I get up and do my thing but I couldn't do it without everyone. I mean, I, I don't even know how to express how important it is for anyone going through this to really find a, a nice support system. And if you don't have one, don't be afraid to say something to your doctors or something because there are support groups and everything, you know. But it's very important because it's it's um, a lot of the battle is just fighting. Yeah, it is. Before we go to Carolyn, um, to the, those out there who are paying attention to your story and may have someone in their life or will come into a place where they have someone in their life that's going through something similar, there are a lot of people that are afraid. They don't know what to say. They want to be there. Right. They, want to, they want to offer support. What, what, what can you give them? Um, you know, I... Because I've experienced this with my own family. There were people that were immediately um, very, you know, how are you doing, you know. And then there were some people I didn't hear from. And I was like, what? But everyone deals with things differently. I think it was shocking for a lot of people. And I think while we say, you know, my first thought would be, oh, they're not going to want to hear from a bunch of people. That's not true because hearing from people, yeah. in my opinion, helps you forget. Even if it's for a moment, that moment's huge. And don't be – I, I think people shouldn't be afraid to ask questions, you know, um, and just knowing the offer of support and prayers is, is a huge thing for a person. You know, and with people that don't have anybody that, you know, it, I, I find it so wonderful and um, warming to know that there are groups out there that they will, you know, put you on a prayer list. They will be in contact with you. They'll send you a Christmas card, you know, and um, just little things like that are huge. But don't be afraid to to be supportive and don't be afraid, you know, to be afraid, you know, because it's, it's a natural instinct not to want to push, be pushy to someone who has any ailment, whether it's cancer, diabetes, AIDS, whatever someone's going through. My first instinct was always, you know, give them time, give them time. But I, I, now that I've gone through this, it's more like, oh, what can I do to help you, you know? And that, it, that's my thought. Someone else might have a different thing, but I just think it's it's important to be there. My mom had surgery for lung cancer the day after Thanksgiving, and uh, she oh told quite a few people that, yes, the C the C word, it's here, it's in the room. If you don't know what to say, then don't mention it at all. Just yeah, ask there's me no how need. I'm doing today. Tell me something funny. Make me remember something we went through. You don't ever have to say that word, but, you know, don't be afraid to come and talk to me. Don't yeah. be afraid to, yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because you, you think people might be afraid to, to even touch you. To even hug you, like, can I hug you? Yeah, hug me. I mean, you know, watch a movie with hug me. Hug me tight. You know, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and that her statement is so true. And I, um, and God bless her. I'll put her in my my prayers. That's a lot to go through. And you. you know, you gotta. She's exactly right. You know, but it, it's just everyone's a different person. And 
you know, just because you have cancer doesn't mean you're not a person and you're not, you don't have normal right. feelings and that every day is, every moment of every day is this big struggle. It's not that. It's it's just you're a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, some days I'm breaking inside, but I'm not breaking inside every day. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's exactly it. Carolyn? Um, is Will still there? Oh, Will, you want to go next? Yes, Will, yes, yeah. I'm here. Is Will, okay, you go ahead with your questions. Okay. Hi, um, Robin, this is uh, oh. Willie. Hi, Willie. Hi. Okay, I've got two questions. First, I do want to commend you for um, being brave, and, and that means a Thank lot, um, especially for me on a personal level. Um, I just wanted to tell you that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I'm a cancer survivor. I back in college, I had the um, the a brain tumor, so I survived oh through that. Yeah, I have a blood clot in well, my lungs Well, congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was definitely a challenging time, but I just wanted to show, tell you that you're not alone, that me and you are on a personal level. Uh, we're on the, the same wavelength on as far as being on the cancer, you know, the cancer path of that. Um, my question for you was, uh, what would you like others to learn about the, your cancer and for them to, to be aware of? Um, well, first of all, I have to commend you. That is wonderful. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, that is that is something unbelievable to go through. So you're very brave. Um, I would say what, you know, people often ask me, you know, what would you like me to know? Um, more than anything, I want people to you know, learn from what I'm going through and what others are going through and go look into that vaccine. Go get screenings. Go get your checkups um, because they matter, you know, and do them regularly. You know, get your blood yeah. work. Get Don't be afraid to go to the doctor, you know. I think and listen that's, to your body. Yeah, listen. If, if something's not right, you know it. And even if it doesn't feel sometimes like, if it feels like you're perfectly healthy and whatever, still go on your checkup date and stuff because something can pop up out of nowhere. Um, that's the really, really important message to get out there is please don't don't take it lightly because you don't want to go through what I've gone through and obviously what you've gone through, you know, so – that and I, I'm, I'm a believer in, you know, be there for another person too, you know. Remember, there are other people going through things, and it. If you don't have cancer or anything, great. That is what we want, you know. But don't forget the person that you see in the store that has a problem. Be gracious, you know. Um, be patient with people. And, um, you know, Amen. just do what your doctors tell you and and pray, you know, <laughs> pray for people. Don't be afraid. To, and if you don't pray, give them good vibes. That's all I can say. <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. And I agree. Amen. Uh, my second question for you is, what is your ultimate goal for 2021? My ultimate goal happened. <laughs> um, my ultimate God goal was bless. to was yeah. to get surgery, and I thought for sure they would do surgery in 2021, but they did it on the 22nd of December. So um, I've been told that next Thursday, which is um, February 4th, will be my last chemo um, until needed. So we're still going to obviously go through stuff, but we need to give my body time to heal. Um, so that will be, uh, be a huge thing for me. My goal is, is to try and get as healthy as I can but still eat junk food <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and um, get the, you know, I, I want to get the word out anywhere I can 
Um, I want to help others. And um, I'm hoping to maybe during 2021 kind of write a book of the experiences, um, like a self-help book, uh, to help other people going through this because it's it's not fun. It's it's hard to be positive all the time, and it's it's hard to have the strength oh, yeah. knowing that you're going in and you have – you know, I have a chest port where they do the chemo in – you know, it's hard knowing that, you know, I, Wednesday, you know, February 3rd, I'm going to be sitting there and I'm going to be like, I know tomorrow I'm going to have this chest port, you know, and sitting there for five and a half hours having chemo and other stuff put in me. And But you got to do it. You have the feelings of running away. But, you know, the, the goals ultimately are just stay strong, stay positive, and share my experience and be an open book for someone else who, who may need help. Thank you so much for answering my questions and I'll keep you in my prayers and me and you will definitely stay in touch. Amen. Well, thank you so much. I'll keep you in my prayers too. Oh, Robin, nice, Will. you know, this was, this has been such a beautiful conversation when all is said and done, when the pandemic is over, when the chest port is done and, and you've gotten that six months, you know, it's it's time to go back into real normalcy, real life. What are you what are you dreaming of? What are you what are you working towards? Um, I think you know, I always love acting <laughs> and I always love singing. Um, I think Ultimately, you know, no, I'm kidding. There, there no. you go. <laughs> there you go. I, I'm pretty sure Stephanie from One Life to Live can show up and shoot another person. It's fine. <laughs> you know, um, they are bringing a Pine Valley spin off to nighttime. Maybe she could pop up in Pine Valley and do a little crossover action. <laughs> yes, or, or Maggie, you know, Maggie could come in and just start you know, bopping around like a crazy person. But <laughs> um, I think, you know, that would be fun, definitely fun. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to speak at some things, you know, share my story, hopefully maybe do the book in a book tour. Um, you know, there's so many ideas that I've had, you know, that I'm, you know, Another thing I was thinking was I would like to, around the holidays, um, for some people in the oncology that don't have family and stuff, to just go in and sing or, you know, sit with them or, you know, you know stuff yeah. like that. I think that that would be good. Um, and I would love to be able to walk Ralphie more because I used to walk around with him and I haven't had the energy. <laughs> so... I think ultimately, you know, I I hope all of us get through this stupid pandemic <laughs> so that we can, you know, enjoy each other and see people and, you know, have some normalcy. But, you know, who knows truly what norm- normalcy is. But I certainly would like to be able to wear lipstick without getting it on a mask, you know. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I'd like my ask. hair to grow back. You know, like that's that's another goal. My hair is starting to grow back, but I really want to I want my hair. I got my eyebrows and eyelashes just recently starting to grow in. So Yeah. But I've had some with wigs. So, you know, I have all different types of wigs. So that's good. It's all good. As an it's what you got to go through. As an actress, would you play this after surviving it? Would you play it for a role? I would I would love to play it. I'd love that opportunity to actually play a cancer patient because I am one. Play it. You would and play I, it. I would I would I would love write to do it right it now. And bring it as a digital. I'd be willing I would, I'd be yeah, willing write to it play and bring it as a digital. Yeah, I I would love to have someone let me come in for an episode of like, 
you know, one of the hospital shows or whatever and let me play it because I I know I know the truth. <laughs> I know the truth. It's not pretty and um I would love that opportunity actually. Robin, thank you so much for for bringing you know, you're you're so vivacious, and you are Maggie. Oh my God, you are Maggie. Or Maggie is you. Um, yeah. So everybody, everybody who's <laughs> following you, and and you know, I gotta be honest. You know, when when they told me that you were coming on the show, I had to go. Um, I remembered you from Nickelodeon, and and of course, I remembered you from Stephanie. I had to go and 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 you know, look and see what else you had done, et cetera, et cetera. So everybody that's following this journey, and and I saw how much you've put out there, and and I really was touched. So everyone that's following you and following your journey, what do you want to say to them? What are your final thoughts for tonight? Um, Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. This has been really a lot of fun. I mean, it has been years since someone brought up Ray to Gay. (laughs) I was just like, wow. You're welcome. Um, (laughs) Thank you. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Um, For anyone, you know, listening, um, what I can say is thank you. Thank you for for letting me tell my story. And there will be so much more, you know, that I'm going to share in the future and stuff and many more experiences I'm sure I'm going to go through. And, you know, I'm not giving up. I'm fighting. And... You know, I hope everyone is healthy and does whatever they can to avoid what I've been through. (laughs) But, um, you know, I was always told if you can go to sleep at night and think of one thing that made you smile, that you wouldn't have wrinkles. And Mm. And I've done this since I was little, and I do, unfortunately, have wrinkles. But... (laughs) But it it, it does Girl, make a difference. Earned them. You I earned did. Them. They, there's, Every yes. one of them is a badge of honor. How about That's you make right. us a promise and you make the listeners a promise? At, when you when you reach the six month mark, come back and talk to us again. Yeah, I will. I will. I definitely yes. will. I um, like I said, February fourth, I have the last chemo, and then um. We'll we'll see what's going on there, but I will keep you posted, and I'll definitely come back. It'll be a pleasure. Oh, good. Yeah, we love to have you. you, Robin. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank Candace, you. Any last words for Robin? For Carolyn? Um, Carol. I know this is a good one for you. Yeah, Carol. Stay safe, Robin. We love you. Yeah. Oh, love you guys too. Thank you so much, and um. You know, everyone, stay in touch with me, and and we'll we'll have another another fun time. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna well, I'm gonna bless. hit you up later, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh we're gonna talk about things childhood. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up my childhood again. <laughs> and you give that smiling puppy a bunch of rubs, belly rubs, mm-hmm. kisses, yes. fluffs from all of us. I Anthony, will. Candace, I definitely Carolyn, will. Willie, David, you give one for each of us. Oh, yes, I you, will. Robin. I'll give him a lot yes. of belly rubs. Thank Mwah. you. A lot of belly rubs. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. You too. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow. There you go. That was nice. You know, we've done... We've done a lot mm-hmm. of amazing interviews. You know, we've we got um I you know, for some reason I'm thinking about Rial tonight right now. We've done some amazing interviews on this show, but tonight I, I don't know, we transcended. Tonight was something else. Candace I know this it one was, was it wasn't this an one interview. Was, this yeah. wasn't an interview. This is like talking to one of our friends that we haven't talked yeah. to and, and and no pun when I say this forever in a day. But, um, no you know, just, you know, she's just an amazing person to share her story with everybody and, and openly. I mean, you, you have some people who are kind of afraid to share their story, um, their fundraiser, you know, especially with the way things are nowadays. 
but she has taken this in stride and I mean she has actually gone above the um amount that she that, that was requested if you go on her Facebook or social media pages. She's just a she's a bright light and she's just I yeah. I just I'm just gonna say it again, amazing woman and she's such a a bright like she's if you're looking for a a picture association with words, she's brave. That is that is if and you've seen her pictures and everything, she's brave. And truly a beautiful soul inside and out. And I can't believe I talked to Mary, Maggie, y'all. I can't believe it. I'm going to say girl. I know, girl. <laughs> like, I know, girl. I know. You know, I was sitting here thinking the whole time, you know, she was talking and every and, and I, I, I don't want to be political, but, and there is a but, because I think it, you know, for me, it needs to be said. We're talking about, unity in the country right now and and the division and talking to to robin and and hearing i mean they told her she wasn't going to be here in 2021 right or yeah and look where she is and Mm -hmm. look where she is you know we have to sit through a trial in the senate that's going to happen we have to pay attention to the things that are happening in the world but when you hear this, when, when, when you talk to someone like that, you know, it being red or blue, you know, I, I saw a quote on Facebook just today, actually, that said, what happened to the white? Why do we have to be red or blue? We're red, white, and blue. I don't want to get political, but when you're talking to, when you're having this kind of conversation with Robin, it just makes everything is it really that important what color your party is? What vote is going to yeah. happen? It, you know, is it really that important to be right when people, four, you know, 400,000 people are not here anymore? It, it's just, you know, I, I just had to say it. It's, it's one of those job. things where it makes you stop. It, it makes you one of those because I know I posted it, and you know, I know everybody has different points of views and stuff. But that's yeah. why I just said, you know, with health wise, you know, it's okay to do research on your own. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. just say that um, because sometimes not everybody will tell. I mean. <laughs> Look, even the even Doogie Howser can't tell you everything. You you sometimes you gotta, you know, trust your instincts. Sometimes that's why they always say get a second opinion. Um, right. And you're right. The world that we live in right now, obviously there is something that's being given right now that some people are fifty fifty on because they feel as though there needs to be more time. There needs to be more research. That's fine. Do your research. You don't listen to A, B, C, or D. Because guess what? A, B, C, and D will have a different reaction than you. You need to take it upon yourself to do what's right for you. And I'm just going to say this because I'm one of those people. I also have a chronic illness. And I do every freaking research there is. I am like they I said it about the exactly about television. Oh, you used to see me with, with health. I could, I'm not like Discovery Health, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting – actually, everything I know is from ER. <laughs> just, I just say I'm just joking, you know, but but no, I just was I was I agree. It's just you know you hear Robin and then you kind of realize that you know she's going through something that you know I'll, I'll say this is that it's it's unfair for people to go through things like this. It really is, but sometimes it makes you stop and think. It really makes you stop and think. It's like you know, all of this pettiness that's going on right now. And, yes, I said pettiness. It is. Sometimes it is pettiness. I'm it is pettiness. Absolutely. You know, everybody, everybody, mm-hmm. everybody will say, oh, my problem is bigger than your problem. Robin is going through something right now that's bigger than all of us, all of my problems. I mean, I know there's financial problems. I know that, you know, people have met, met relationship problems and stuff. But she's going through something because – the doctors told her she wouldn't make it here. Imagine, imagine. I mean, and you're right. It's like over. Actually, I, I don't believe it's four hundred. I believe it's over four hundred thousand that are not here. It is absolutely. Some, it is. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Sometimes, and and you may know somebody who's dealing with what Robin's dealing with right now. You know, somebody who has the coronavirus. You know, sometimes you just need a, a pause. And I think, I think it's good sometimes to have a pause in your life and make you and and make you realize what's important. And it, and make you realize is this all is, is all of this bickering and everything worth it? Yeah, you can get your point out. No. That's fine. You can get your, your. But is it to the to do we go across that line? I'm gonna. Oh, yeah, that's also, I'm, I'm gonna address. Yeah. I'm gonna address something on tonight's show. You know, I've gotten a couple of Facebook messages and and a few um, Twitter messages. Um, I don't really talk about it on the show. I've gotten much more verbal about it on my social media. Um, March 24th is, is an anniversary for me. It'll be five years that I lost my sight. I am, I'm blind. I'm, I'm, I'm fully blind. Um, in the very, very dark with the light behind me, with a big old magnifying, they call it a CCTV. Um, you know, I can see some things. And, and there are moments on my soaps that I wait till the dead of night, get the light the right way, so I can see that one moment. Um, but what I really see is blur. It's like looking through a fish tank. Um, I, I don't talk about it because it is what it is, and I'm no different yeah. than I was March 23rd, five years ago. Um, but it's a really sobering experience to have something thrown, and, and I wasn't facing death, thank God, although, you know, if you'd known me 10 years ago, I would have said, you know, if my legs go or my eyes go, I'm out, you know, I'm going to throw myself mm-hmm. a big old party and, you know, say goodbye, um, but you find a strength inside yourself, and, and you, you have to just keep going, and you have to find the spaces and the places that, that give you the inspiration to keep going. This show absolutely has been, you know, in my darkest days, Pam came along, David came along, Candace, Carolyn, and now we have Willie. You know, when I started on the show, we had a couple other people, et cetera, et cetera. But this show has definitely been one of the things that have kept me going. Yes, um, you know, it, it's a, it sucks. It sucks. Every day there's a moment where I, I wish even just for 10 minutes a day I could have sight so I could quickly read mail and watch, you know, watch Ava Jerome. <laughs> I remember that scene. <laughs> that scene, I, you know, the best scene in 10 years of soap opera history. Kick your Jerome! You set up right now, Kick your Jerome! I, if I could have 10 minutes, I would have given my 10 minutes to that scene, you know, but it yeah. is what it is, and yeah. and it moments is, like is. tonight, yeah. Willie, I thank you so much for sharing your your experience tonight too. But we are a soap oh. show, and you're welcome. We are a soap show. <laughs> yeah, we are. And a soap we show. gotta hear Carolyn talk. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Let's talk I'm about these. Girl, I'll just have to say. I just have to say, I know you were a Chad and Abigail fan, but at this oh, Lord, point, girl, 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 yep. girl. Mm. I've been waiting to hear her about this. <laughs> well, I, 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 I'm so happy. I'm so happy uh, that Abigail gave her another punch today. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, no. She had that one coming. <laughs> Girl, did you know that that was her sister? Did you know that was her sister? Yeah, but I don't think it is. I don't think she is his sister, right? Well, I don't know yet. And Jack doesn't Mm. know. These these twists and turns. Mm. These twists and turns. Mm. (laughs) I never heard of that. I never heard of her mother's name before. She said it. But I'm, I don't. I'm, I'm I don't unless it was. Do you guys Colavati remember? <laughs> this is a Ron Colavati special. This is a Ron yeah. Colavati special. On a, on a, and I love you, Ron. But you know me and you, I had some words on Twitter. And I said, okay. <sighs> I, mm, okay. I, um, mm, 
I need for this to play out either or because I have two scenarios. For those who don't remember, Laura and Jack had a thing back in the uh-huh. 90s. Right. But Laura, right. Laura didn't, have, didn't remember. We, Laura had memory loss. So I was thinking, I was like, maybe this was an alter because Jack didn't know that Laura was Jennifer's mama. Okay. So they're playing it as if Laura is not the mama. That's okay. That's fine. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. You know, that's, that's, I, that's cool. I, I got, remember that's, reading that. I remember reading yeah. about it, but I, I never saw yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it Andy, was and weird. I, Andy and I remember it. <laughs> Yeah, we remember it. It was like it was like ba- we was you know babies and pacifiers. That's how we remember. But the thing is, is that okay, Ron? I see you. I feel you. I see what you're still going to do. You're still going to put more more in this because there was something that was said was that ex daddy Harper. <clears throat> I call him Harper, but it's really Harper. Yeah. I was waiting. Yeah. Yes, girl. He, he, if you guys remember. He was a U.S. Senate, like, Jack was running for, for the state senate or something like that. So in order to preserve the, you know, the nice, clean-cut version, whatever you want to say, of course, Daddy was pay. But it wasn't Daddy. I don't think it was just Daddy. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think Mama had something to do with it, too. I think Laura knew about Gwen. Now, Ron, I will say this. If you play this beat, I will... I will sing your praises to the highest of my ability. I do need Laura to know that Gwen was that because to me, okay, we're gonna need something to stir. I mean, yeah, it's unfair. Jack is kind of getting thrown under the bus again, but I need for Jennifer to feel a certain reaction that her own mama knew about this and didn't tell Jennifer. Can you imagine if your mama, Carolyn, if you can you imagine if your mama comes to you and says, "Honey, I knew about Gwen." All this time, you knew there was another child, and didn't even tell me. And I'm married to the father, and Abigail's not his only daughter. Oh, I would be mad. So are you? I would be Jennifer heated. knew. Are you saying Jennifer? No, knew? I'm saying that Lauren knew. Jennifer's mom. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. unless, because I mean, unless Ron goes ahead and actually does the whole Lauren's mama thing, but I doubt it at this point. I'm, I'm over it. I'm, I'm done. I, well, what I, are, what I, is that? I was. Well, is that what you're mm-hmm. saying? Are you saying, are you saying Laura knew, or are you saying Laura used that name? I think Laura knew. I think Laura Laura oh. knows about Gwen. Okay. What are I mean, I love a, it. I've got, I've got a teaser for y'all um, uh, for for the days. Um, pay close attention to Charlie. As you know, he likes to mess with his glasses. Now, all of you know. How Ron was on One Life to Live. If you remember, he's done the DI, what is it, DID story. You know what that is? Mm-hmm. He's yeah. done it on two. Okay. He's about to. Okay. He's done it on two. He's done it on Charlie three. Has, he's done it on Charlie three. Charlie has DID because pay attention. First he messes with his glasses, and then he's got that switch personality that we all know he attacked Allie. So watch yeah, folks because saw. One Life to Live okay. fans. Are gonna catch on to what and he's general doing hospital fans story. too. Okay, <laughs> As, okay. I need to talk to the queen of days real quick <laughs> because they like, like. Go ahead. Do you like Charlie? You like Charlie? You like Charlie? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm I love Charlie. On, uh, yeah, I'm planning on meeting him in May. He's gonna be at an event yeah. down here. Ooh. Yeah, Mike, Mike is okay. awesome. He's all right, really all right. awesome. I'm going to be the one. Anthony, I love Rip the bandaid off. I, I love Charlie, but if they go down the DID road, I'm really going to I'm really going to be very upset. I would love I'm really upset. Yeah. I, I would love for, you know, for it to be that you know, he's got childhood trauma or something that he's not split personality or anything, but that he can't control the thought processes or something. But if you go down the DID, the DID road again, you're going to make me hate the character. And right now, I love me some Charlie. Okay. Anthony, you, you got to really tap into my, into my brain. I think it's like, I think it's a possibility they're trying to do a redemption story with uh, Charlie. Yeah. And you, no and you just said it. You just said it. You just said it, Willie. They put that on a billboard. Well, there's no part. 
Well, here's the thing. Well, here's my, but, but, but this is my problem. My question, I got a question. Okay. Mm. Okay. Why is it that every villain on this show or any show <laughs> has to have a mental illness <laughs> or mommy and daddy issues to to do bad things. Case in point, Gwen is jealous that that she had no daddy, so she goes ahead and she drugs Abby. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Charlie has mommy issues. Yes. Yeah, Charlie yes. has mommy issues because Ava didn't wasn't around for him, and that she favors Trip. So you mean to tell me because of mommy and daddy issues, we go ahead and do this? But now we're gonna to have to have mental illness for rape. You know what? You know what? No, we're not doing a DID yeah. storyline. I days of life, you better not do another DID storyline. Because you already had Abby. <laughs> you said it the you other day. You already had Kimberly. You, you, you said it the other Wait, day. Like, um, at one of the the podcasts, you threw it out that Ron needs to stop doing storylines he did on One Life to Live. That's what he's doing. He's doing another One well, Life no, to Live. Well, no, this is not. Well, here's, here's my problem. With that. Well, all that well, on days. Well, this is not just Ron. Like, okay, Ron gets some blame, but this is a Days of Our Lives thing. It's yeah, to me, and I'm, I'm just going to throw this. Thing. Yeah, I'm just going to throw this out there. I do feel as though they did something different with this characters, with this story, with, with the character because of the popularity of Mike. Hey, Mike, because a lot of people <laughs> do like Charlie. However, yeah. my my problem is is that back in the day. Back in the day, go back into the time time warp. You had characters like yep. Roger Thorpe, Carl yep. on, on No World, hey, hey y'all, Todd Manning, Sonny Carrasos, right? They would do bad yep. things. Now, neither one of them had now bipolar is something you know, but none of them had a DID. None of them had a mental ill. You see what I'm saying? Like to me, why couldn't this have been an organic story? Why exactly. are you putting they a DID spin it. on it? Exactly. They didn't overdo it. They're, they're, it. It's they're just cheapy. trying to make. They're, no, they're trying to make. They're trying to make this character have redeeming qualities, like they're doing okay. with Gwen. But you know, wait, real quick, and 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 I'm right there with you. And they almost did it right with 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 Xander. They almost got it right. Because oh, yeah. they got him to the they got him to the point he wasn't mentally ill. Yeah, he had his Victor Daddy, you know, uncle issues, et cetera, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. But they got him to the point where he started looking at himself in the mirror going, Oh, I'm ugly. I don't like this. You know, I can right, be, so I'm gonna work to I, do better on myself. Yep. I'm gonna do know, better on my own. Yeah. And and they could do the same thing with Charlie because they they're selling the audience short. If Charlie came to Jesus, so to speak, and mm-hmm. said, "Amen," you know, what this is the life I'm living, and wait, this is the life I want to live. Now, what are the steps I have to take to get there? Now, it's not gonna, you know, look at Ben. Ben's a perfect example, actually, too. Now, mm-hmm. I, of course, no, 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 no. Let, me, let me finish. Let me finish my okay. thought because uh, okay yes, but he but nobody gave him a chance. Nobody but Sierra, of course, because you know, hey, I mean, I would want to get in bed with him too. But uh, I digress. Um, nobody <laughs> gave him a chance. He had to earn. He had to earn his way into into the people's. They did a good job with Ben. They almost had it with with Xander. So why not actually give the audience? The, the benefit of the doubt that if we had a character that, that broke down and said, I don't want to be this. I don't want to be this. I want to be something that can have a family, that can raise children, that can be respected in my community and, and make the steps. And nobody's going to believe it at first because, of course, it's Salem. But, but take that journey instead of making him have – Multiple personalities in his head. He's gonna put on glasses, take off glasses. He's gonna put the hat on sideways. Come on, Ron. You're better than that, and your audience well, is better than that. Well, another thing too is okay. You take a look at Charlie, right? I'm about to say this character's name and tell me why they couldn't do this with Charlie. Jack Devereaux. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just, Just think about it. I mean, 
honestly, if any secret what? child should have came out, instead of it being Gwen, it should have been Charlie. Well, well here's yes. another thing, too. But here's another thing, too, okay? Young and Russ is bold, Dave's GH. I'm putting all of y'all on blast because y'all are doing this. I like Emily O'Brien. I do. I think she has definitely grown as an actress. She is a great villain. Yeah. I love some Gwen. But can we please stop retconning soap children to keep them on the show <laughs> longer? My problem is, is that Gwen was perfectly a fine character on her own merit. Yes. Right. Oh I understand God, you need yes. the angst. I understand that you need angst for Chabby. You need angst for Jennifer and, and Jack. I get it because the pe- the torch has been passed to them. But why do we have to constantly... General Hospital, you did this with two two characters, Peter and with Nell. And on Young and Rustless, I can't think of... I'm trying to say... Oh, when y'all Rick Conn and said that Sharon had twins. Um, and on Bowling the Beautiful Family Flow, it's a... To me, y'all need to stop it. And not only no, that, no. but seriously, Char, I, I do not understand why we can't, because like one of my friends said, why can't we have organic villains anymore? Why do we yeah. have to give them redeeming quality? Look, not, Roger Thorpe wasn't redeemed. James Sandbag wasn't <laughs> redeemed. Okay? Candace. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I've got yes, one more. I, I, I just want. Guys, can you can you explain to me organic? Organic means okay. You have a villain who comes into town and does bad things, or Billy Clark Huggle is just or, or yeah, or just rooted, it, or just rooted without being a good a good person. Like to me, like all right, you don't need a sob story for every bad for a person who does bad things. Like with Gwen, she poisoned Abby because she doesn't have a daddy. My daddy wasn't there for me. I did it. I said my mommy died, <laughs> and I'm all by myself. And Abby can't tell me say his life. I don't understand that. Or like um uh uh or Peter. <gasps> I can't. I don't have the oh, Pam Lord, if you're listening. Mercy. I'm sorry. God, I can't Pam, do yeah. Peter right now. No yeah. girl. No. I gotta add he gotta, he gotta add for y'all. There's one there's another there's another tidbit that you all may or may not like, but apparently for days they're gonna revisit Stefan all over again. <laughs> well yeah, with uh with, with Vivian. Uh, they want to. Yeah. They want. Yeah. They're thinking about um, Ralph planting the seed in Gwen. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Is that what you're talking? Do- so yeah. I'm, 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 I'm hearing, I'm hearing two things, of course, but. One of the rumblings that's going on is that they may be doing a dual role for the role for Stefan and Jake, or they could have it where Jake is actually Stefan. It could go either way, but the the big rumblings is that they might do a dual role with uh, Stefan and well, uh, Jake again. I don't know what's going on. It's, they're it's they're a probably going to have to do sweet. flashback. They're going to have to do flashbacks of Stefan with Brandon playing because we all know Linda Dano comes uh, actually this week yeah. either tomorrow or next week. So they're going to probably have to do flashbacks with that. Let me just say this, too. Young and a restless and days of our lives. Uh, <laughs> stop forcing couples with the lookalikes. It's not happening. It's not working. And yeah, it's not coming true. Thank you. Yeah, I, thank you. I, yes, you need Bonnie, to pay. Bonnie and Justin... Bonnie and Justin, I like Judy oh. Evans and Wally Curse, but no. No offense to Camilla and to my Brendan. Brandon, I want you back on this John Sakaro, by the way. But Jake and Gabby not feeling it. No. Young and the Restless. No. Um, okay. We got to move on to the Young and the Restless. Yeah. And I got to start out Open with something. Open it and pr- it up right there. Yes. What do you okay. got, Anthony? What okay. do you have? For, for I, I gotta start off with the, the with the young and the restless. For you know, guess who's coming back? Um, w- w- um, Theo. what's his name? Um, Theo, Theo Vanderway is back, and, and Nina. this will lead to this will lead to the new storyline going on with um, Lola. There's a rumor that she could be pregnant. Yeah, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I, I, I've checked out of that. 
right now. Now, when Theo comes yeah. back, I probably will check back in because I, I love him from the beginning to the end. <laughs> they, they took him in so many different places where I was like, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. But he had enough acting chops that he kept me with him, even though the storyline was like, oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I got a couple. I got a couple bones to pick with the young and the restless. Okay, Okay. you brought me back. You got me there. You got me to the point where I was saying, okay, you're ready to go. You're ready to go. You got it. You got it. You're on the track. You're on the track. Okay, here I gotta say this, Chelsea. You you done destroyed that character. Who (laughs) is Chelsea? Who is Chelsea? Come on now. Okay. Secondly, okay. When did Sharon actually become a therapist? Second, and are you? I want to use that word. I want to use it. Starts with an F. It ends with a K. Are Pride. you kidding Pride. me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You, you, I don't care. You're in Genoa City, which is supposed to be like a Chicago. Sharon, 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 Sharon. Come on in there. Um, well, we saw her go to school. Can we get Phyllis out of the the hotel because it's getting boring? No. no, Beyond it getting boring, it's going, you know, it's going off the ether. Like the whole Barry TJ, uh, JT, I mean, it's going off the ether. Like they start these stories that have such potential, that have such a good place where it could go, and then they go and take me into this place where, like, what? Come on. Come on. You got that. You had gold with Faith and what Faith's going through. Oh, young and the restless. I want to slap a, like six people. I, I, I want to slap a whole bunch of people because there is actually so much potential with, with what they were setting up and where it's going. I'm like, are you kidding me? Come Candace, on. what are they now, doing with that? Are they taking Faith's story into, like, what happened with Cassie? Is that what they're trying to do? Okay. Okay. Let me just say that. Go, right go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Candy girl. All right. <clears throat> I'm paying work. I'm very close attention wait, to wait, what's going on with Younger Russell. Wait, girl. Go one ahead. more second. One more second before you go, before you go off. Because there is one bright spot that I'm absolutely loving. I'm sorry, but I am loving everything with Sally. They found she. That's the niche. That's the niche. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Candace. Okay. So you know they do have a story consultant over on that show that's working some miracles. Um. Here's what I'm 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 gonna say. <clears throat> Young and the Rossless. We we had a good thing going. We we was we were cool. We were tight. And for some right? reason, I don't know. Like I feel so our therapy session isn't working right now, but we need to no. get back into this place. Um, I feel as though the only bright spot for me is the faith storyline, because out of this whole thing with Adam, nobody predicted that faith would feel the most out of this. And it's interesting because, you know, if you've been a fan of Young and the Rustlers, you know how they've always protected Faith ever since she was switched at birth when, you know, that whole story. <laughs> and you also know that they're trying to protect her from the fate of a Cassie as well as, quote, unquote, the Newman curse, as I like to call it. But we all know she's going to rule that place one day. Um. Sharon, 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 I need for you to stop acting <sighs> like you did a couple of years ago when there was a different executive producer over there. Yeah. I need yeah, for yeah. your brain I need I need for your brains to be in full gear. Because to me and I and I know this is the one of the couples that everybody is hoping for for this year is Sharon and Adam. Because right now it would it would cause a scandal in town. It would. And if you think about the history of Sharon and Adam, they have saved each other from from the, the out before. But let me just say this. If by doing so, you're going to ruin Sharon's character. And you're right about Chelsea. This is nothing against Missy. This is nothing against no. Missy. No, it's just the way that they're Missy. making Chelsea. It's, it's the way they're making Chelsea so pathetic and desperate for Adam. When there's plethora of other men out there in the GCC that could be with her. <clears throat> Let me just say this right now. If we do get Sharon 
and Adam. I would like to see Chelsea Ray or che- or Ray and Victoria. Thank you. Um, I just don't know what when did this happen with Chelsea because I didn't think I never thought she was one of those death like she. I'm gonna I'm just gonna say it right now. I'm gonna rip the band aid off. Well, Melissa me, did an interview. She said that she was looking forward to doing the storyline because it was challenging for them. It's challenging. It, here's the thing. Okay. I believe it is challenging because, first of all, actually, I want to be her right now because all she has to do is sit in the wheelchair and just look at people. And I wish I could do that, too. The get paid for just sitting and looking. I uh, want to do that when I grow up. I want to. Missy, I want to be you when I grow up. But, two, to me, I think we all know what's going to happen. It's just as a fan of the character who's gone through the ups and the downs, I never thought she would be in this part. Like, to me, the way that they write Chelsea and Adam, it's as if Adam is choosing her to be sec- as second best. It yeah, is. Yeah, when quote very unquote, true. Yeah. She's supposed to she's supposed to be the quote unquote love of his life, but the way with this version and I I've, I've been through all three versions, okay? Through the Michael Mooney, Justin Hartley, which they seem to forget, and now Mark Grossman. And this is nothing against the actors, but they don't bring the chemistry. I have more kept chem- obviously with Sharon Case and with Mark, even with Mark with somebody else. But with this version of Chelsea and Adam, I'm not feeling it. I feel mm-hmm. as though they're now in the something, friend zone. Especially when you yes. had Adam. And, you should, yeah, when you and had, they should have capitalized on the chemistry between him and, and Michelle Stafford a, a, a couple right. of months ago. Yeah, like, well, why are you trying to push the Sharon on us? And honestly, like to, if it was if it was um yeah. uh, uh, Adam three Adams ago, I would be all on the on the Sharon because I actually loved them when they had their moment. I don't like well, them. Let me, I don't like well, the, this version. The thing of is, is that I'm going to be honest with you. Michael Mooney and Sharon Case and M- Melissa. They all work together. Like, I felt the chemistry with both of them, like with Michael and Missy and Michael and Sharon. I felt the yeah. chemistry with Sharon and Adam and, and Chelsea and Adam. With Justin Hartley, considering the fact that they really never played Justin Hartley and Sharon Case in a lot of scenes together, and they had Justin and Missy in scenes, I felt a more, a more of a connected soul version. Like, they were true soulmates. With Chelsea and yes. Adam, you know, yes. here he comes back, new face, new body, new abs for this woman, and everything. And then <laughs> the way that they brought back Chelsea to her original format of being a con artist, and then that's how she left. With this version, I don't feel it because there's been numerous times where Adam has made Chelsea feel second best, but Chelsea is trying to be that ride or die, die chick. But yeah. the thing is, yeah. is that. When you see, like, I don't know where the writers, I, I, I kind of figured I, I know where the writers going to go. And that's why I said, like, if they have her do this, me as a fan of the character, I might not, I, I, I don't think I can get behind. Because to me, they're yes. going to make, in yes. my opinion, the character yeah, even more desperate. And not only that, but I do feel as though if, and it, and it, and it hurts the Sharon and Ray fans, because you're making Sharon out to be like she's she's needy for Adam. Like you're just and I don't like nervous. that either. Why why are you accepting like when Ray had the flowers and everything, I wanted Ray to throw the flowers in trash can, to be honest. But why are you constantly going over to his house? Why are you doing this? Why are you so needy to be like like separate? Like you're now Murray. You now have your own life. Adam has to live with his life. And I understand the yeah. build up to this is going to be explosive. But honestly, like, wait, that's Candace, like that. yeah. real quick, one of the biggest violations of it all is that they had brought Sharon to a point where she had grown, yeah. she had grown past all this. Right. And, you pulled, yes. and there's no reason to pull her back to all this. And this is why and this is why I have an issue. I, I mean, I said this before. I said this is why I kind of wish they didn't bring back Adam Newman 
Because yes. kind of once they said this, I kind of said, oh, they're going to have to do this, and they're going to have to do this, and Chelsea and this off. What's making it even worse for me, and I understand the dramatic flair of it, is that, okay, let's just say Sharon and Adam do get together. How is Faith yeah. going to react to it, considering how Faith is acting right now? And that's why we are saying that if you take Sharon in this direction, it's not going to look good at all. Because this is going to be, if something wants to happen to Faith, oh, you don't think, mm-hmm. you, you, Sharon, you better feel something. Because that's why Nick didn't want to say anything. Because, and, it, and it's, yeah. like, it's one of yeah. those where yeah. it, it, it's just to me, I don't understand why, we, why they're taking Sharon back to, like, you know, square yeah, one. Please. And I don't understand why they're making Adam like to me. I love the scene when Faith went went off on Adam. I was like, nobody else will do it because, like Nikki said, nope. everybody is trying to protect him. By the way, he's another person that has some daddy mommy issues, and that's why he killed somebody. We don't know him, but he killed yep. somebody. In case you were wondering, but right. I just okay. with this whole thing, we gotta I, go on. I don't understand. Yeah. Okay. Go Before on, we leave, you have to ask a question. One, one more thing. I just have to think. Go ahead, Willie, and then I got one thing to say before okay. we leave. Okay. I'm just curious. Questions. What do we all feel about this young, this merry-go-round going on between Devon, Elena, and Amanda? Do you oh, feel that they should continue with this, or could, should they stop? Oh, because oh, I please. was enjoying. Oh, please Lily let and... me go. This is why I was about to say. I was going to say this is why you look alike. Coupling isn't working. Obviously, uh-huh. we knew they were going to go down yeah. to Man- Devon uh-huh. and Amanda. We knew this. But the problem is, is that, it, to me, at Amanda, see, okay, Younger Devices, you're doing the same thing you did with Hillary. You're putting Amanda yep. on that island. Yep. You had some amazing, look, I love, I love Michelle and, and Jason Thompson, but Jason Thompson has chemistry with everybody, including Brum. So yeah. Amanda and Billy, I'm, I'm with Jack. Amanda, Amanda, Jack, Amanda, Adam, Amanda, and Nick, Amanda, and and Nate, Amanda, and Kyle, Amanda, and Theo. You have like a plethora of guys on that show that you could have done. Yes, I understand. You need to recreate the Neil, Hillary Devon, or the Drew, Malcolm, and Neil. I get that. I understand that because a lot of these shows feel as though if they go back into the classic format, it will bring more more viewers. Let me tell you something right now. It's I know the spoilers. Working. It's not working, and it's nothing against the actors. But this is the problem. When the first time it was supposed to happen, I was glad they didn't do it. But now that they're going, they're setting it up, to where, full alert, there's going to probably be a who's a daddy storyline. I'm over it. I'm over yep. it. They've made, they've done what I did not want them to do. Again, yep. nothing against the actors. But Nate, Elena, Devon, and Amanda has now become boring to me. Okay, so before we leave the I, young arrest, yeah. I got one more thing to say. As far as this whole surrogate thing is concerned, I get, I get. And I think we can have some fun moments with Mariah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But who was the actress who played Allie on Bold and the Beautiful? PSN, P- whatever her name was. Why Ashlyn Pierce. Bring, yeah. Why can't you bring in a new character that you know is not going to be a legacy character to play the surrogate, to have some fun, and then let her do her chops where, where Bold and the Beautiful drops the ball? Where she could have been psycho beyond, she could have been Sheila 2.0, and then they push her off the damn balcony, blah, 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 blah. Why do you have to do this? Bring somebody in, create some new drama. Why do you have to keep it? You, in Genoa City, you're telling me I that there's take, only 75 I can't people. I take Mariah in and, and Abby seriously on this surrogate storyline. They to rushed me, their really friendship. They, they rushed, rushed their friendship. Because if you remember, around the time of, and I can tell you when it happened. It was around the time of Lola, like when Lola and Kyle got married. And then right. they dropped it off a little bit, and they picked it back up when went all this towards um, Abby's wedding. Here's the, here's the thing. I actually, I'm going to tell you how this storyline could have been solved. You could have had Lola be the circuit. Because Abby and Lola are friends. They're actually real okay. friends. Think about yeah. it. Abby, but yeah. I'm also going to say this, too. Okay. And here's, a, 
And here's another thing. I'm actually, okay, I'm a little, okay, G.H., days, bold, young, y'all on blast again. When young couples get married, the first thing isn't always about babies to think about. God, yes. Oh, okay, that's probably, healing. Girl, that's probably, yes. That's probably yes. one of the last things. Now, I will credit Young and Russell for something. Because I think some fans didn't know about Abby's miscarriage by that demon child of stitches. Y'all remember him? Yeah, mm-hmm. Max. I like the fact that they did address it, and they did address that she still has scars, she still has scar tissues on her on her walls. That's why she can't carry the child. I will say this though. I, for some strange reason, I I wish they would have done it a little bit later down the line, like maybe later Me this too. year. Yeah, where, yeah, where you know Abby, so where Abby, you know, starts to have a conversation, and you know, saying, you know, one day we're gonna have children, and you know, she finds out on her own that she can't, and that's what's gonna bring her the tears to tell Chance. And by the way, Chance has always wanted to be a father ever since John Driscoll played the role of Chance because he was more of a father to deal with than Billy. Okay, fangirl, I had to stand girl and say that, but. Yeah. I just, I don't, but I mean, do that think, is probably one do you interesting think they're moment. they're going to try to break up um, Mariah and um, Tessa because of Mariah thinking of becoming the surrogate without oh, talking to Tessa? Let's, 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 let's leave that for next I think they're trying to break them up. Let's leave that for the next show because I think that there's a lot of plans involved with this, but it, yeah. it, it is not going to, yeah. it's not going to give Young and the Restless what they want it to be. All right, we're going to skip uh-uh. bowl tonight because we only have 10 minutes left, and we're going to go into General Hospital. Okay. Lord. Okay. Lord have mercy, General Hospital. I have been with you since I was three years old with my grandmother. Yeah. And I keep saying, I keep saying I'm going to divorce you. I'm going to sign them papers. But then you roll me back. And I'm like, okay, we could try this. Yes, we, we went to marriage counseling, but I, I, we don't have enough time. I can't go into all this. So yeah. let me I just know. say, we don't okay, first Franco. Thank you, Franco, okay. for straggling uh, Peter It made my day. Okay. First and foremost, they, they – yeah. oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. You've been teasing us with the whole um, Jackie Templeton thing, is it, isn't it, blah, 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 blah. Oh, girl, please. If, if, you, you, if nobody – if you think we don't see the writing on the wall and the necklace, okay, it's not now. We all know it's not now. It's going to be Shallow's last revenge. It was Willow all along. He passed it off to Nell. Yeah, he, oh, my God. There are so many things that could be right that are so wrong right now. I have one thing to pass on. There's something ahead, I learned. Yeah, there's something I learned. I don't know how it's true or not, but it's from a mutual friend of ours, Candace. Sir okay. James, Sir James okay. mentioned on his latest podcast on, uh, you know, the one he does on Sunday nights. Yeah, yeah. He told yeah. Frank. Spit it out. He told Frank that he's heard from more plausible sources that it's Willow they're working on to be the daughter. Okay, I'm going to say this. I don't think it is. I think this is a retcon of a retcon of a retcon of a retcon of a... How many retcons does the story has? Se- seven, right? So one, two, three. So retcon, retcon, retcon. I'm still going to say that it's Sasha. And I'm going to tell you why real quick. Because you're going to get more... Even though they dropped that story with Will and ne- and, ne- and Nina. Lord, had so many ends in my head. I think right now they're trying to reform and redeem Sasha into being... Not like the new Lucy Colwitz, but she has the qualities of being like your new character that you that you're really rooting for to get that happy next ending. generation. Well, not yeah. next generation because if that was the case, then Lucy Colwitz should have been Sasha's mom from Jump. But I'm going to let that go, General Hospital. I'll let it go. But I, I let it so, go a couple so, of weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I let mm. it go too. But I feel as though since Sasha's been through a lot. You know, the whole almost dead because of the drugs and, you know, Mm -hmm. she lost Michael and all this stuff. I think they're going to go ahead and retcon this 
where Sasha is Nina's daughter. Okay, so real quick, what do y'all feel about the revelation coming up? And I'm sure you really didn't hear about this spoiler, but apparently that Finn is going to turn out to be, um, or Chase is supposed to be uh, Finn's son. Do mm. you feel this, or do you think they should just let it go? Girl, well, Anthony, uh, Willie, please. Anthony, Willie, you had a they... notion a couple podcasts back that yes, it was, been a year Finn now. was going to be, Finn is the easiest lie. And it could turn out to be someone totally, someone else. That was from you, Anthony. No, 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 no. You um, said it wasn't going wasn't... to be Finn. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did say that. I did say that. <laughs> and I, and I, I will eat those words. But there is a beat that they played, that they dropped the ball on, that, that totally gave us a red herring. Because they let us, not even let us to believe, they gave us actual words that he was, that Gregory stole his girlfriend. Please, please yep. go back and watch the episodes. Because they said, yep. point blank, J- Gregory stole yep. his woman. And now they rewrote yep. history. They rewrote it completely. Yep. And that's told you. Record. Okay. Well, well Chase is not supposed cool. to leave soon. Chase is supposed to leave soon temporarily, so I think that's going to lead up to that exit story that I keep hearing about. Chase, okay, Willie, I, I know you think you have, you know, good sources. Chase is not leaving. Chase is no. taking his one month. When you when they're on the soaps for a certain amount of time, they get to put in for time off, based upon the amount of time that they put in. Chase is exercising because there is movement on the next movie in the Christmas series um, with him and the wife. Yeah. And if everything yep. lines up, they're going to be able to film that. Now, if they're not, yep. then he takes his time anyway. I don't know, blah, 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 blah. But hopefully all the signs align because that was such a cute movie. And I really would like to see yep. part two where they're, you know, in, in the city and all that shit. Uh, oh, my God. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but okay. he's not leaving. He's exercising his one month, uh, you know, time that he gets to have. So please yep. don't don't buy into those rumors because she knows soaps loves to give you this drama that doesn't really exist. It's not really true. At this point, we have all right, right. she no, knows soaps. I don't, I don't follow that one, but the reason I was just saying to you is because it was my understanding that if they did leave for Chase to leave, it would be like a temporary exit because, <laughs> yes, I heard about the filming that he's doing for the next, for the next movie, because the first one was really good, so that's what I was hearing. So I didn't know. It was the number one movie either. of. It was the number one movie, not of the Christmas season, of the entire year. On Netflix. Yeah. Yes. So, so go, Josh Swickard and 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 his beautiful, talented writer wife. God bless. But the character yeah. of Chase is not going anywhere. So they'll find a way to exit him off screen. Um. So on and so forth. Okay, quick poll. So all, you know the three of us that are left on this on this call. Does anyone care about Finn and Anna's wedding at this point? No. Unless he. Well, not. maybe because I want to see the fallout. I'm waiting for Peter to get exposed at any point. I, I just, I just, I just want. I'm sorry. Look, I know Pam is probably listening, and Pam, I'm sorry, but you know it needs to happen. For February sweet. This is not a personal thing for me, even though it is. But I I need for the Saint Anna Maxi oh. Peters wedding to really yep. be explosive. And this is gonna be around February sweet. They already hyped it up because it's in T V Guide. If y'all haven't checked it out, yep. it's in T V Guide. They're hyping it up with the promo that's coming that's gonna be coming out soon. Um to me, when you have something like this, this is in General Hospital's book. Something has to give. So to me, you either yeah. have you're going to have the reveal about Chase at the wedding. You're going to probably have Alex come in and be like, "Surprise, I'm still alive." And then you're going to have Peter. Oh, we got Woo! one minute, Candace. All right, everybody, thanks for, for uh, joining us. Robin, will, okay, seriously, real quick, the surprise at the wedding is going to be Hayden. 
I, I lost my words. I'm surprised that the wedding is going to be Hayden, and she's going to have dirt on Peter. We have had with a David wonderful Hayward. time. We have had a wonderful <laughs> time with all of you this evening. We will be back in two weeks with another fabulous Bye. show. Thank you so Thanks much for, for Robin me. for sharing your story. Good night, everyone. Good night. Hey, everybody, support the soap. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2Radio.com.